All right guys, so I wanna show you how to create object layer masks using the EV rendering engine inside of Blender 2.83. I can't speak for any other versions. This is just the one that I'm using. So keep that in mind if you are following along. So why do you want object layer masks to begin with? Well, there are plenty of times that you wanna go inside of After Effects or Photoshop or whatever other software that you prefer to do your compositing in and you need your individual objects on a mask of their own so that way you can edit them uh, independently from everything else. Uh, so if you notice inside of the rendering passes properties using the EV rendering engine there of course is no object layer pass available. There's no option for that. Inside of cycles there is but there are many times where you might want to use EV or you can only use EV for, and for whatever reason that you have for using EV rendering engine by default there is no object layer pass. But I have found a workaround with a little bit of fiddling with some options and I found a method that I think would work pretty well for you guys. So that being said there is some setups that you need to do in order to make this work properly. So if you see here, I just have a simple scene, just a few primitives uh, playing in the background, a sun and a camera. Uh, nothing spectacular, just a simple scene. Doesn't matter what your scene is, this should theoretically work with any kind of scene, no matter how complex it is. So what you need to do is for every object that you want to be masked out individually, you need to put onto its own collection. So it doesn't matter how many objects it is, you can have 100 objects or you can have one object, but if for whatever object that you want to be independent from everything else, you need to move that into its own collection. So I'm gonna do that right now. Uh, I'm just gonna click on this monkey, press M, go to new collection and let's name this monkey. Cool, I'm gonna do this for everything else in my scene. Great, so if you are doing things properly, you should see something like this in your outliner for every object that you want, it has its own individual collection. Now this is absolutely important for our next step. The objects that you want to be masked out must be in their own collection. You can have more than one object per collection, that's fine, but just know that whatever is in that collection will be masked out as a whole. It'll be treated as one object. So the next step, you need to go up to the filter options up here and you need to enable holdout. I think this is a new restriction toggle feature in 2.82 or 2.83, but this is very important. Enable that. Now you will notice next to the collections option that is toggleable. What this does is it toggles that object on and off in your render, but for all intents and purposes, it is still there. And what I mean by that is let's, for example, turn off all three of these and keep the plane. You will see in the background that the shadows are still there. This is not the same as changing the viewport display or the visibility. This is not the same as turning it off for your render or your viewport display. It is a different feature altogether and this is what allows you to be able to make object layer masks. But there's still more that you need to do. Now, for each individual collection, that is each object that you want to have masked out, it needs to have its own layer. If you click on the layer up here, let's just name this base layer. This will be our original layer. Uh, what you want to do is create on this button, click on this button next to it to add a layer. And let's name this monkey. All right, great. So we have this layer called monkey. So now what you want to do is you want to turn off using the holdout feature or the holdout toggle. You want to turn off everything except for the monkey layer or the monkey collection. So I'm going to turn this off, turn that off and turn that off. And now we have the monkey by itself. Also, if you have a bunch of other random objects in your scene that you weren't intending to mask out, you still need to move those into its own collection so you could turn that off. So you could just select everything else, create a new collection called everything else and turn that off as well. Next, we want to do the same thing for each one of our other objects. All right, great. So if you're following along with me, you should have something like this. So what you'll notice is again, even though the objects are turned off in your viewport, the objects are still considered there for the render. Mist passes, depth passes, things like that, in, uh, interactions with objects, all that still happens. You know, reflections, shadows, all that still happens with these objects that are turned off using the holdout feature. You just can't see it. And it is not the same as turning it off the visib turning off the visibility in your viewport or your render. So keep that in mind. So to recap so far, you have moved your individual objects that you want masked out into their own individual collections. You have enabled the holdout filter toggle and you have created layers for each one of your objects that you want to have masked out individually. Next, what you want to do is go up to render and hit render image. Perfect, great, let that run, close out. Now go to your compositing tab and you should have something similar to this. If you don't see your nodes, make sure you click on the top here where it says use nodes and then these should pop up. 
So next, you want to duplicate this render layer node. So Shift D to duplicate, drag that down. We're gonna what we're gonna do next is go to this drop down menu, and this is the layers drop down menu. And we're gonna click monkey. And here we have a render layer for just the monkey. And you wanna do this for each individual object that you want a layer mask for. All right, so if you're following along, you should have something like this. So if you have Node Wrangler enabled, you can control shift left click and you can preview those nodes individually. And you should see each one of the objects are on their own like this. Uh, this this first one right here is untouched. We haven't changed anything about this. This is for all intents and purposes, the beauty pass or the combined pass. This is everything in your scene together. This is basically your final render is what this is. The next step is you want to create an alpha over node and you want to create this for each individual object layer mask that you want so I have four objects that I want layer masks for I'm going to create four alpha over nodes and I'm going to drag the alpha output of each render layer into the bottom node of the alpha over go ahead and do this for each object in your scene now if you control shift left click with node wrangler enabled on one of these you will see you now have a proper layer mask for each individual object in your scene. Now, all you have to do from here is simply create a file output node for each individual output or for each individual layer. And inside of each one of these file output nodes, you just want to navigate to the folder where you want to render out your render passes. We'll name this combined. We'll name this monkey alpha and then repeat for the rest of the objects in your scene. All right, so if you've been following along, you should have something like this. You should have individual render layer nodes for each object that you plan to have its own individual layer mask, all of them each going into their own alpha over node. Make sure you're going into the bottom node of the alpha over. And then from the alpha over nodes, you're going to each individual file output node where you're going to specify the folder that you want these render passes to be. Now, I also have a file output node for my beauty pass. Um, I don't think that's actually fully necessary. I think by default, of course, it'll just save out your render how you wanted it to in the render properties, but whatever, I did that. So next step is hit render image or render animation. Give it a second. Boom, great, it's done. Now go to that folder where you specified the output and then you will see here, I have the folders combined, which is that combined image. And then you'll notice monkey alpha. Look at that. We have an alpha of just the monkey. We have an alpha of just the plane. We have an alpha of just the sphere and we have an alpha of just the square. Now, this also works with animations, not just still images, which is what makes this so powerful. Obviously it has kind of a setup. It's not a quick, just tick an option inside of your render passes, but you know, if you have no other options available to you and you don't have the time to render everything out inside of cycles with object layer mask, and you need to use the EV render engine, this uh, should be an option that works for you guys. Now, I'm not a master at Blender by any means, so if you see something that I'm doing that's kind of inefficient or improper, Sorry for that. Um, but yeah, guys, I hope this is helpful for you. Um, and let me know if you have any questions and let me know if this works for you or if you have a better way of doing things. So yeah, until next time, stay creative.